In this segment, we're looking at piecewise defined uh, functions. Uh, these are actually pretty practical applications. Um, you know that shipping charges can uh, vary per pound based on how many pounds uh, you're shipping. I used to work in a moving company. I know that our shipping charges were based on, you know, per hundred weight and it was it changed the more you shift you got a price break so that would be an example of a piecewise defined function here we're just looking at some basic algebraic equations first of all f of x could be x squared if x is less than or equal to zero it is going to equal four just straight up four if x is between zero and two including two and if x is greater than two strictly greater than two then we would use this third rule of x minus one okay so how do you use piecewise functions? Well, pretty much like you use a regular function, except you have to determine which rule to, fit, to use. If I have f of negative 3, I say, okay, negative 3, where does that fit in this criteria? It's less than or equal to 0? Yeah, so we're going to use this first rule. And we're going to take our negative 3, square it, and get a 9. All right, next one says f of 2. Well, 2 is not less than or equal to 0, but it does fit in this middle uh, category here because it's actually equal to 2, that little equal sign. So that means our function value is just going to be 4. And for the last one we have here, f of 5. Well, that's not less than 0, and it's not between 0 and 2, but it is greater than 2. So we have to use the third rule, 5 minus 1, and I get an answer of 4. Now let's see about graphing these. For this one, I'm just going to use a two-part uh, uh, function here. And the, they're both going to be linear functions. The first one's negative one-third x plus two. And we're going to use that for all x is less than or equal to zero. And the other one is x minus five. That's true for x is greater than zero. Okay, now because this has got an, an uh, or equals two, I'm going to put a note when I make my table here that I'm going to use a filled in circle there. And I'm going to start with my boundary of zero. Um, because I've got a fractional coefficient here, I'm going to use multiples of three. Now I don't go positive three, positive six. Why? Because x is supposed to be less than zero. So we use the negative three and the negative six. When I plug zero in up here, I get two. When I plug negative three up to the top one, I get one plus two, which is three. When I plug a negative six in, I'm going to get a four. Okay, so I go ahead, fill in that circle, graph my three points, and I can see I've got this line going backwards. And, it, and that's the only segment that it is. It doesn't go forward from my zero. Now I'm going to take the second rule. I'm going to make another table. I'm still going to start with zero, okay? But this time, you know what I put by my table? I put an open circle to remind me that's just a placeholder. That's not really the function's value, but I need to start at the boundary for my graph. And there are no restrictions on x here because it's just x minus 5. So I'm going to use 0, 1, 2. Then I'm going to plug that in and get negative 5, negative 4, and 3. Again, 0, negative 5 with an open circle as a placeholder. The 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, and we've got a line going off to the right. And that's it. Now when I drop a vertical line, it doesn't touch more than once in any spot. So this really is the graph of a function.